Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. And today we're going to be talking about Sekiro. This is going to be another one of my Sekiro guides. In case you guys missed on the first one, we went over the basics of combat as well as how to tackle some of the enemies and mini bosses in the starting areas. I'm not going to be repeating the stuff that I talked about in that video. So if you missed out on that, you might want to check it out because it does give you the basis of how the combat kind of works. Uh, and it should make a lot of stuff easier for you as well. And some of you might be wondering, Rurikon, why is it taking you so long to do these Sekiro guides? And the main reason behind that is because uh, I've been holding off on posting them to give people time to actually go through the game and not get spoiled in their subscription feed uh, by me just like posting boss names and you know showing them in thumbnails and stuff like that straight off the bat. And what that also means is I'm gonna need some additional help from you guys. So if this helps you out in any other way, just like consider hitting the like button, subscribing, sharing with your friends, because it will help out because I'm super late in bringing these out uh, because of the spoiler stuff. So any help that you guys can give me there, I would be very, very thankful. But anyway, uh, beginning, I'm going to be talking about Jozu the Drunkard, uh, which is going to be fairly easy uh, with the strategy that I will give you in case you guys are struggling with that particular boss. And I'm also going to be giving you a couple of tips and tricks as to how to tackle the, some situations in the Harata estate that can be particularly challenging for you. So anyway, before you actually go after Jozu the Drunkard, make sure that you have the Flame Barrel Prosthetic Tool, okay? This is the location where you can get it, in case you guys don't know exactly where I am at this point of the video. At the very beginning of the Harata estate, if you go all the way to the right, you will eventually come across a scenario that should be familiar to what you are watching on screen right now, and that is where you can go and get the flame barrel. While you're at it, also make sure to pick up the axe because it will be useful for some of the enemies that you will encounter before you get to Jozu the Drunkard and make sure to install those two prosthetics uh, onto your uh, prosthetic tool so that you are ready for both Jozu as well as any shielded enemies that show up throughout um, the rest of the Harata estate. These two tools are going to make your life a lot easier. So, Jozu the Drunkard. The very first thing that I should mention is that there are two... Uh, packs of mobs before you get to Joe's drunkard one of them is linked to Joe's himself the other pack is isolated so if you want to explore the initial pack of mobs explore that whole area I would just advise you to kill those guys and then reset the area and then bypass them because you don't want to like consume resources before you fight Jozu. You want to remain with as many resources as possible. So if you want to just explore the area before actually engaging with Jozu, be sure to do that. Just take your time, whatever, and then just skip everything through the rooftops and head straight to Jozu. Now, Jozu is going to have a bunch of people around him. And very much like I told you in the first video, whenever a mini boss has a bunch of enemies around him, the first thing that you want to do is you want to kill all of the enemies around the, the mini boss so that you can isolate that mini boss and after you isolate the mini boss you want to get a death blow in before you actually start the fight because basically you're going to you know have things down and you only have to uh take on half of the health pool that you'll that you'll need as opposed to having to take down two full health pools so anyways this is how i did it uh, i was actually pretty sloppy if i'm gonna be completely honest but pretty much just do whatever you want. All you need to know is that if you go up into this particular area right here, usually Jozu will lose aggro, and that allows you to reset the area as many times as you need to kill all of the enemies. So even if you don't do a clean run in cleaning up the enemies ahead of Jozu, just take as many times as you need. Just take your time and just enjoy it. Now, personally, I tend to go first for one of the shield dudes and then kill the archer. The reason behind that is because that archer can be a pain in the ass. That archer has got like the eyes of a friggin' hawk. He can see you before you even enter the Harada estate. That's that's how hard these ranged characters can see you. They see you like a bazillion miles away, okay? So uh, make sure, clean everybody out, try to avoid using as many resources as possible. And after you cleared everybody out and Jozu is properly uh, reset it. Make sure to equip oil on your uh, quick bar so that you can swap between oil and healing items because we are going to be burning Jozu, but we're not going to be starting the fight by burning him. Like I said, you start the fight with a death blow. Now, an interesting thing here is if you want for this particular uh, boss, you can actually call upon, uh, there's like one of those blue samurai dudes in there. 
Uh, you can do the death blow, run up to the samurai dude, talk with him, and the samurai dude will help you bring him down. In this example, I'm not going to be doing that because some of you might be like, oh, but I want him to survive or whatever. Him dying or surviving doesn't really have any impact in the story. Like, he might tell you a couple of more uh, lines of text or whatever, but it's not a big deal that you're like, oh, I'm... I have to ensure that he survives or anything like that, okay? So basically, uh, the way that we did it is we backstab them immediately after you do the death blow. You throw some oil on him and then you start baiting attacks. How do you bait attacks? You approach him and you run away. Always like running in circles, running around him to make sure that you're always out of range. But at the same time, go into his range every now and then to bait the attacks out. Now, usually he does two attacks and then he stops or he does like one of the perilous attacks that you can't block and then he stops or if he starts drinking his poison that's another good opening if he starts spewing the poison onto the blade that's another good opening and all you have to do is you got to exploit those openings so you threw the oil immediately after the death blow so the second you have an opening you go in there you burn him after he starts burning you can give him like uh two swings i believe it should be safe to give him two swings of your sword but if you if you are panicking if you feel like you don't want to attack him because you don't feel comfortable yet. You don't even have to do that, okay? You can just let him burn down. It's not a problem at all. Once the burning is finished, you know, give it a couple of seconds in between each time that you throw the oil so that you don't waste it. But once he finishes burning, he's probably ready for you to throw another bottle of oil and then you bait a couple of more attacks. And after you get an opening, you run in, you burn him again. And you do this until he's extremely low on health, at which point you can just go in there and do the killing blow. That's pretty much how we do it. It's not super hard, and with this uh, strategy, you can pretty much take out all of the Jozu clones, so to speak. Uh, it's not super challenging, it's not super hard, and I believe that anybody can do it. An interesting misconception that I've seen in some of my videos is that some people are saying, why do the bosses even have health? It's all about the uh, the posture gauge. The health doesn't mean anything. And that uh, is a misconception I feel that I should clear up in this video, which is the health bar is actually extremely important because the way it works is the more health the boss has, the harder it is for you to, gener to build up posture on his posture gauge. The less health he has, the easier it is for you to generate posture and uh, the, you will stop recovering posture at a certain point in time. Now, another thing is also, if you actually reduce a boss's health down to nothing, one hit will cause him to break posture. Just one hit, regardless of how the posture gauge is, which is why you see me going so hard on Jozu near the end, because I can see I'm about to burn his entire health, so I might as well keep going and just kill him, okay? So keep that in mind. For the people that are saying that like, oh, the health doesn't matter, it's all about posture, it's not like that. The more you chip down the health, the easier the things start becoming, because you'll notice that the posture meter is going to fill uh, considerably faster. Anyway, after you kill Jozu, make sure to check out this particular area of the level because there is a secret area there. There's some prayer beads in there and there's a couple of other goodies. It's just, I want to make sure that you guys don't miss out on that. But anyway, like I said at the start of the video, I'm going to be giving you guys some more tips for other uh, sections of the Harata estate. The first one is going to be the Shinobi Hunter. I've seen a lot of people struggling with this fight as well. And very much like uh, Jozu, you're going to want to clear the area. But before you even go there, you want to get a skill. I would highly advise you guys to always get this skill first. If you do not have this skill, then go farm, go grind, you know, whatever. Make sure you get this skill because this is going to be a key skill to give you guys an idea, every single playthrough that I do, this is always the first skill that I get. That skill is the Makiri counter. You want to make sure that you get the Makiri counter before you face off against Shinobi Hunter. It is not mandatory. You can dodge uh, the thrusting attacks, but it is a lot easier if you have the Makiri counter. So if you're struggling, this is going to be something that you want to, you're going to want to get. Another thing that can be useful for the Shinobi Hunter, even though I don't show it in this particular attempt, is the Firecrackers. Now... This is where you can get the firecrackers in case you guys missed out on that. They're going to cost you about 500 sen. So make sure that you save up some 500 sen. The firecrackers is also one of the most powerful shinobi prosthetic tools. So you'll definitely want to get it regardless of the shinobi hunter. It's just I would advise you to get Mikiri counter and firecrackers if you are struggling with this particular dude. So, like I said previously, you're going to want to clear the area 
uh, you can always reset stuff very much like you can reset the area in Jozu. And here you can just jump onto the water, swim a little bit upstream, and then you can come back, go onto the, um, the little tree branch and start clear, cleaning enemies one by one if that's what you got to do. Anyway, once you manage to isolate the Shinobi Hunter, you're going to want to do a cheeky death blow just like we did previously because that's just the way it goes. Now, hopefully you'll have a better timing on the firecrackers than I did. You want to wait until he gets back up, then you're going to pop the firecrackers. Firecrackers will usually stagger him and give you some openings to attack. I tend to just go balls out attack every single time. And I know not everybody's going to be able to do that, but that is what I tend to do. Whenever you see that perilous symbol, it is going to be one of two things. And you're going to have to pay very close attention as to where his spear is positioned. If his spear is positioned off to the side, most likely he is going to do a um, sweep. With the sweeps, you got to jump, like I told you in the previous video. However, if the spear is pointed towards you, most likely he is going to thrust at you. And what you want to do at that point is you want to dodge towards him. You dodge towards him, that's going to do a Mikiri counter. Just make sure that the attack is already coming by the time you dodge in that direction. It's going to take some practice. Mikiri counter, if you are doing it for the first time, is not particularly easy. Do not be surprised if you die a couple of times learning this uh, because you, you need to understand, you always need to take death as a learning experience. Do not be discouraged. I can assure you I've died plenty of times in there and I can assure you a lot of people died plenty of times in there as well. Do not be discouraged by dying to the Shinobi Hunter. Okay? So, uh, Mikiri counter and firecrackers and eventually you'll just generate enough posture damage to kill him. It's not, there's nothing else to it. If he's doing a sweep, like I said, if the spear is off to the side, jump to avoid the sweep. Anything else, maintain uh, your offensive because it's going to force him to block and it's going to force him to do other stuff. If he does thrusting attacks, you give him the Mikiri counter. It shouldn't even take that long to beat. And if you need an opening, pop those firecrackers in his face and you will get an opening. Uh, again, he's not super hard, so to speak, but he is extremely punishing. And if you manage to, you know, mistake a Mikiri for a sweep, you're going to get punished and most likely you might end up dying. So again, just don't be discouraged. So anyways... Now let's talk about the Purple Shinobi. Some of you guys might not be aware of this. There is a secret passage in the Harata Estate. Uh, the video right now should be showing you how to get there. In that secret passage, you will find another uh, Shinobi prosthetic tool, but it will be guarded by this guy right here, the Purple Shinobi. He's uh, actually an interior ministry Shinobi. He's like a spy dude. But um, you don't actually have to fight him there because these guys are pretty tough. I myself still struggle with some of these whenever I get a chance to actually death blow them uh, without them actually seeing me. I always, always, always take it. So what you want to do is after you aggro him, you want to jump to the water. And once you jump to the water, he's going to lose aggro. And you're going to go back upstairs and you're going to find him walking away from you he's going to be walking back towards his initial position at that point you can just death blow him and you can kill him or you can skip him altogether if you want you can just run into the place where you see the shinobi prosthetic tool you can grab that and you can leave he's not like a mini boss or anything he gives you i think some iron scrap or whatever it's not super important that you kill this enemy if you are struggling i'm just saying it, it is also super easy to uh, backstab him so it's not really a big deal so now let's talk about the the bridge with the tarot troop dude now you might not be a word tarot troop yeah it's that big guy with a bat i know that some of you guys are probably struggling on that bridge because you don't really get a lot of chances to practice on tarot troop dudes and their move set is uh annoying and it takes quite a bit of time to take them down and at the same time you also have two shield guys maybe even an archer in there there's a lot of stuff going on in that bridge so my advice to you is before you actually cross the bridge because you don't have to cross the bridge you don't have to fight them head on that's the whole theme of Sekiro. you're a shinobi you have a lot of things at your disposal at this point in time you most likely will have picked up some gashin sugar now if you have some gashin sugar what you want to do is you want to pop one of those gashing sugars and then you're going to jump off to the tree branch that is on the other side nobody's going to see you because you're going to be under the effect of the gashing sugar now you're going to walk up casually just completely walk up to him no problem just don't panic walk up to the big tarot troop guy backstab him and he's dead he's not a problem anymore at that point you swap into your axe uh, shinobi prosthetic and you can take out the shield guys and then take out the rest of the stuff uh the, any way that you want 
but that is just an easy way to deal with that Taro troop on that bridge if that is something that you are struggling with. And finally, uh, the, the final thing that I would like to mention about uh, the Harata Estate is that little side area that you have before you climb up to, um, what's it called? Before you climb up to the final fire location, um, that side area has got two spear dudes in there. Maybe you've come across that area and you're like, damn, dude, that was tough. Okay, so here's what you got to do. You're going to sneak up to that area and that is going to trigger the white robed spear dude to move up. You don't want to aggro him, so stay out of sight, stay hidden, wait for him to come all the way up to the stairs. Once he gets to the top of the stairs, he's going to stop. Okay, so long as he's not seeing you, he's not going to aggro, he's not going to move, he's not going to do anything. So you just sit there and you wait. Okay, once he starts moving back, you go up behind him, you backstab him, you death blow him, he's gone. Okay, now there's a black robed spear dude down there. I haven't, I personally haven't been able to sneak up on him. Some people might have been able to do it. I don't know how you do it. I've even gone there with Gashing Sugar. He always detects me. He's an annoyance. So what you do is instead of sneaking up to him, just run right up to him, run right up to his face. And once he aggros, run away. Just run all the way away from him until you lose aggro. Once you lose aggro, run your ass back and you'll find him with his back turned to you and you know what to do at that point. So anyway, these are just a couple of tips and tricks on how to deal with some of the more challenging situations in Harata Estate. If I missed anything that you would like to ask me about in that particular location, I'll try to answer anything that you have to ask in the comment section down below. Another thing that I would very much like to know is what boss uh, would you guys really want me to do uh, next? Because I mean, naturally, I'm, I'm working on a new save file because I want... Um, I don't want to do this in New Game Plus because it'll be like, well, Rurikan, you have all this health, you have all these tools at your disposal, you know, if someone is trying on a new game, they're not going to have all those things, right? So, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go through Gyobu, Madam Butterfly, and all of the other stuff, and I'm just curious which one are you more, uh, which one do you want to see next, basically, you know? Uh, and yeah, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, if this helped you out in any way, hit the like button, subscribe, bell notification icon, comments, feedback, and comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.